Palm Sunday. So, welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, triumphant Sunday. And I need to, uh, uh, especially those who don't know what's going to happen today, and I don't want you to be shocked. It's a typical Sunday at the Harvard Church. Um, so there is no such thing as a typical Sunday at the Harvard Church. But about uh, a month and a half ago or so, we had a kingdom assignment that happened in which... Um, we passed out $5,000 in $100 bills, and um, the assignment was to uh, go out and find a way to use that to make a difference, uh, bless somebody, and kingdom purposes, let the Lord use it, and see what happens. And the condition <coughs> is that you come back on Palm Sunday and report. Did I get that right? Did I get the right day? Is this the day? Okay. Yes, yes. Good, because otherwise that sermon's going to be really short. <laughs> There, let me uh, just uh, tell you that um, there's no real system for doing this today. So, in case you took a number like that, the um, 31 flavors and you're waiting for your turn, um, I could just randomly call on you, except I've forgotten who I gave the hundred dollars. <laughs> so, um, so, what I would suggest is um, uh, why don't you just put up your hand and I'll come to you and we'll do a little bit of Okay, okay, here we go. We got a volunteer. So, I debated a long time what to do, but I kept coming back to the Harbor Church Community Garden because I figured it was the gift that I kept on giving. So, there is seven bags of three cubic compost sitting out there waiting to be used, and it'll probably be used throughout the year, and there's also a bag of manure. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? <laughs> oh man! So the garden. All right. So, and you know the community garden started last year, and uh, families from around in the neighborhood get boxes, and then we have an area that we work on, and uh, food gets donated to the Greenwood Food Bank. I think last year we did like three or four hundred pounds of uh, food grown and delivered. So really cool. Okay, somebody else. Come on. You know, this doesn't really work, so. Well, I haven't been accused of being quiet very often. <laughs> so, um, when I thought about this, I was nervous to take the hundred because I'm sure. going, oh my goodness, what am I, you know? And then I thought, you know, every time I come to a um, freeway off ramp, and I see somebody with a sign. My habit after working downtown for a while was if somebody was asking for money, I'd give them food. I'd give them my lunch and then go out and buy my own lunch because I knew what they were going to do with it. Well, so every, and I am in a business where I carry a lot of, I carry my lunch with me in little bags of nuts, oranges, apples, things. So when I come up to a guy on the side of the freeway, I always give him food. If I've got some, if, you know, as long as traffic allows, and I'm not going to get, you know, cause a major wreck or something, I'm, I'm going to get him food. Well, when that hundred dollars came up, I saw a guy at the 145th exit coming south. That's just what I saw and what I thought I'd probably do. And then, being a part of your club, I procrastinated until yesterday. <laughs> I didn't know we had a club. <laughs> So I ended up, uh, yesterday I decided to go out, and I've been sick for a couple of days, so um, I, uh, I said, you know, today's the day, I'm going to go out, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meet that guy at 145th. So I drove out, and that was my particular goal, and I drove out and didn't see anybody on the way off the exit. I had to go up to 175th and back to get to it, and, uh, and I'm going, hmm, well, I got off at 175th, there was a woman there. And, uh, and I gave her, um, I said, I, just, I pulled the car over and I walked up to her and I said, so if I gave you some money, what would you do with it? And she said, I'd use it for food. And I said, you're going to use it for good, not bad? She said, I'm too old for bad. <laughs> <laughs> I said, do you know anybody else in need? And she said, yeah. And my, so I gave her $15 first when she said she had somebody else in need, I gave her 30 uh, Drove on towards my goal. Got towards my goal, and I drove by, and I pulled over, and I walked down towards the guy, 
and this, this is judgment on me, I walked towards the guy, and he wasn't the right guy. It wasn't, it wasn't the old guy. That's that why you I, don't procrastinate, see? No, but it wasn't, it wasn't the old guy that I expected. It was this young kid smoking a cigarette. And I went, wrong kid. Got, picked myself up and drove up. And as I'm getting on the, on the on-ramp to go down to check on 45th Street, which was the next goal, the guy said, you know, who am I to judge? This is, you know, James, you know? He's, he's wearing the wrong clothes. He doesn't look right. He's, he's too rich. He's too poor. He's whatever. That's, that's not what I should be doing. So I drove a long way back and went back to him and said, so where are you at? What's going on? He goes, well, you know, I'm just, a, I'm, I'm here. I'm trying to get to Baltimore. I've been trying to get a job and, and at an hour on the, on the internet, I can't get at the library. I can't, I can't seem to get hooked up. So I want to go somewhere and I, I'm trying to get home. So here's a chunk of change. And, and uh, and when I actually got changed for that hundred dollar bill, I saw a guy at Fred Meyer. Same story. You know, he was a vet and he needed it. Cool. And um, and I had uh, one other thing, so I sort of spread it out. You know? And right after I got my change, I had a friend from work call me and say, well, "Larry, I'm I'm out in the middle of the field here doing doing my work, and I'm out of gas. I don't know what to do." And I said, "I know what to do." I'm out on a mission. Take this. I'm on a mission for God. I'm on a mission for, for random kindness. So um, I'll be right. I'll be right there. I'll see you in three minutes. She goes, you're all the way over in Seattle. Yeah. I'm in That's great. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Somebody else. Alice wants to go. It's so exciting to hear someone else who was interested in the homeless. Um, I have had a heart for homeless people for a very long time, and um, and I notice them. I mean, when I come through my neighborhood, I notice them. They are my neighbors. They live in my neighborhood, and so I really wanted to do something to bless them. And um, and I thought it was really apropos because I had actually already started my project when. I suddenly got this $100 bill from the church. <laughs> um, I had already had this in plan, and it was just like, I guess I'm supposed to do this, because I hadn't actually done it. It was just some ideas, and I was starting to gather some things in the bottom of my closet, and, um, and I'd been gathering it there for months. Um, so the $100 bill was like, okay, I'm gonna do this. So I really wanted to reach out to my homeless neighbors, <laughs> and, um, so I put together some bags. I put together 10 bags, um, and they had kind of some, you know, sort of things you might think someone might want or need. So there's some toiletries in there and a little bit of food, some snacks and stuff. Tried not to make it too carb-heavy laden, and, um, you know, put those together. And what this, this project had started with, actually, was the first things I had gathered was stationery with pre-stamped envelopes and a pen. And, um, and my idea was I was going to give that to them with a bottle of water and say, you know, hey, write to someone you love, you know. Everybody has someone they love, but we often don't reach out to them. Especially if you're on the street, you're probably embarrassed by that. And I thought, well, maybe this will encourage them to write to somebody they love. So that was in there, and that's where I was started. I had the <coughs> envelopes and pens and everything, and then I went and got the rest of the food. But when I was out and about, I really wanted to reach out to these people personally. And so I found this card, and I thought it was kind of funny because I've never bought um, bulk greeting cards, all the same card. But I wanted to read this to you because I thought it was really beautiful. Um, the very front said, God bless you always. And inside I wrote, Dear neighbor, if you sometimes have the feeling you're a little out of touch, here's a greeting to remind you that you're thought of very much. And that prayers are being said for you in a warm and heartfelt way, asking God to care for you and bless you every day. God bless Alice. And every time I talk to someone, with the exception of, of one group of people I, I missed, I said, hi, I'm Alice. And I thought I would ask if they'd tell me their first name, but they just did. I said, hi, I'm Alice. And so I heard back, hi, I'm Brenda. I'm Monique, and this is my kitty cat, Mary Rose. I'm Bobby. And, um, and he hangs out with Brenda a lot. They, they watch each other's backs. I thought that was really cool. And I also met Dane with Doyle the dog. So it was a great day. Thanks.
Thanks. You guys want to go? We got the, the Bobsy twins here. Come on up. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, that was inappropriate. <laughs> okay. okay, introduce yourself. Joe Bolden and Neil Burge. Yeah. And I've only known Neil about 30 years. So <laughs> this, this whole project came along, and I reluctantly took $100 from. What's your name again? Anyway, so uh, I, I knew I had an idea right off the bat what I wanted to do with it, but I needed another. Get that thing out of my. Head. I needed another hundred dollars, and who but my dear friend Neil Birch? Um, should I? Who I, wasn't I, here when we passed it out? Here. Yeah, he missed out. So, so that, that'll cost you. And every 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 story needs a little danger and fear. So, of course, I go all the way until. A week ago, last Wednesday, and I'm having coffee with John, and he said, "What are you doing with your hundred dollars?" And I said, "Well, I had an idea, but I don't know. I don't. I'm not going to show up." And and he goes, "You're actually you trying to give it back to me." <laughs> and so this is when the fear comes in. I said, "But and then of course you have a, always an excuse because I'm a member of the Procrastination Club too." So he says, "No excuses," and but I need Neil's hundred dollars. And he goes, "Well." You know, I can't get a hold of Neil. He doesn't return calls. He doesn't. Do no offense, Neil. But so, so he says, "Well, just call him right now." So I call him, and he doesn't. He's in a, an important adoption meeting, and so I call him back in 20 minutes, and then I call him back in another 15 minutes, and we're all prepared to say, "I was all prepared to say, I'm here with Dr. Westfall, and I need to talk to Neil." <laughs> but she, but she went. She went directly to Neil, and Neil thinks nobody calls me three times in a row. So he comes back and says, what, what's up? Are you okay? And I go, I'm fine, but it's important. I talk to you. Call me back. So he calls me back, which was a miracle in itself, because miracles happen every day. And, and I said, I have this idea for the $100 challenge. For a $200 challenge, I need 100 from you. And we'll go to Seattle Urban Academy. Uh, which I've been involved with for like 20 years, and uh, and there's students there, and we can pass this money off to them, and then they can do something with it. We don't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Always thinking. <laughs> <clears throat> Neil goes, oh my God, this is fantastic because you know I'm involved with the Big City Mountaineers, which was a group started by Skip Yall, who was the founder of JanSport Packs, and. And they go into the inner city and get kids for high risk and take them up in the mountains and that. And Seattle's the, the, the chairman for the Seattle. The way, the way this got started is I work in the outdoor industry. And there are so many outdoor companies in the Seattle area that came to me and said, why don't you try and get a council going? So I've been tasked to get all these outdoor companies together to put a plan to get some of the inner city kids, the high risk kids, to have this outdoor experience, because a lot of them, you know, you take them out in the wilderness, and there was a story as he's crossing the floating bridge, the guy turns and says, are we in Canada? <laughs> because they've never been outside the city, and they also, um, they hear this roaring noise in the wilderness and go, what's that? And it's a stream, you know, they've not heard it, so it's a good opportunity to kind of, so I've been involved in that. And then Joe calls me, and I thought, well, why don't we see if we can connect the two? So we go out to Seattle Urban Academy, and, and it just so happens I talked to the principal before we went, a few days before we went, and I said, this is what I have in mind, you know, give four students $50 each and let them go out, and, you know, the only requirement is that they tell us what they do with the money, and she goes, wow, this, could we do things a little differently? And I go, well, possibly, what, what do you have in mind? She goes, well, we have five classes that are doing this kind of giving and how to, how to listen to God and how to give back and stuff. And if they each had $40, they'd actually have some money to do something with it. And then, and so now all of a sudden I said, oh, and, and my friend Neil Birch wants to talk about Big City Mountain. Oh my God, this is just fantastic. We'd love to talk to him about that. So we go in and, and we, we gave the money out, and the students did some things on that, and then we put to, Neil put together something on the big city mountaineers. So if it wasn't for that hundred dollars, this wouldn't have happened. So I'm going to just read real quickly some of the things that the students did, 
And uh, uh, dear Neil and Joe, thank you for your generous gifts, monetary and opportunity for outreach all in one. After an energetic series of discussions, my focus group, Alea, Claudia, Dwayne, Kayera, Leticia, Michael, and Vinny, decided to split the money for local use. Half of it will go to next door to Hope Place, earmark for diapers or formula and needy things, and the other for the Rainier Valley Food Bank. Uh, Joe, and this is another one. Joe, the students in my class, Michael, Rajane, Davos, I can't pronounce it, Jovan and Ritra, I don't know how. Anyway, had many great ideas. The first three named students were the only ones in attendance on Friday when they decided how to bless others with $40. They came up with local, domestic, and international options. Michael took the lead and said he wanted to give the money to those uh, based on government help and social service not being present, could not take care of their own needs. They divided the money, $20 for a prison fellowship angel tree and 20 for world concern to provide chicken feed and vaccinations. And as it turns out, the vaccinations for chickens are really important for third world countries because the chickens provide most of their food and their eggs and, and that. So thank you very much, your timing was great. Our, and this is our class, Anthony, Azika, Coco, Isaiah, Joseph, and Tashi has decided to bless young children of Union Gospel Missions, Women and Children's Shelter Hope Place by providing candy-filled Easter eggs. We're hoping to place eggs in the grass play area on Friday and supervise an egg hunt. Thank you for sharing this experience and generosity and discerning how to be obedient and giving. Our group, Devante, Rodnita, Jordan, Eric, Ephesia, Malik, Nate, and this is Novi, Oz, Foz, Foz, started off thinking about big needs, world poverty issues, local homelessness, etc. But in the end, we shared stories about needs in our own community and our own families. We decided to buy supplies, diapers, groceries, gift cards, people in the group lives. We also bought cards and wrote notes of encouragement, which I thought was fantastic. Students are delivering them this weekend. Thanks for the opportunity to develop a cultural giving. My students also considered local opportunities to give. Many are involved in Union Gospel Mission considered giving the money there. So in conclusion, so I didn't have any, this is from David who's the chief guy, I didn't have any students in this focus group but wanted to include in our story the piece about God's incredible omniscience. As I mentioned earlier this week when we met, this giving opportunity was divinely timed. See, our procrastination was, was <laughs> had nothing to do with it. As we as a community are in the season of learning the gift of asking and listening to God. The giving opportunity allowed our students to practically ask God his will for giving and as a community collectively hear and agree on what God is saying. As you can tell from the stories, our students feel that they are and have been in communication with God, doing good and loving things with their neighbors. Our SUA community is so thankful that you and Neil chose us to partner with you, extending the opportunity to experience Christ. There you go. Okay. Wow. wow. I'm exhausted. <laughs> so, the, okay. so one of the things that uh, hits me about the things that we've been hearing about is how uh, when we trust God and do a kingdom project like this, it's not really limited to what we come up with. It's actually an opportunity for God to do something far beyond what we might have thought of. And uh, I was just thinking about the story that um, Neil and, and Joe told, and that uh, pretty soon there's 50 or 60 uh, students who are now partners in the ministry. and. Uh, they're coming up with great ideas, and and, uh, and you want to give it back a, a week and a half ago. Yeah, right. Good thing I didn't take it. Okay, so um, I was thinking about this passage in Matthew 10. Jesus calls his disciples to him, gives them authority to drive out evil spirits, to heal diseases and, and sicknesses, and they're sent out with the following instructions. As you go, preach the message, the kingdom of heaven is near, Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. 
Freely you've received, freely give. That's basically what the kingdom assignment was, right? God gives us freely, and we go out not knowing quite what we're going to do and who we'll see and how we'll get there and what will happen, and then we're in, we end up being surprised by our own ministry, you know, and, and that's, that's very, very exciting. Okay, let's have some more reports. Who'd like to go next? Okay. I want to appear so you can turn around. Well, John, I love tell, tell me your name. I lost. Tell me your name. Not, my name's Eric. Can I have another hundred dollars? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> no, I used my hundred dollars to buy birthday cake and help some alcoholics of friends of mine celebrate their sobriety birthdays. Really? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not an alcoholic, but I attend a couple meetings. Because it helps me get out of my apartment and I meet people and I kind of get in tune with people and my own issues. And a big deal for them is are their annual birth dates. And it was exciting to celebrate that with them and their joy and spread the peace. Okay. Thank you. Good. Good. Eileen? I, I know you, but you can say your name. I'm <laughs> Eileen Westfall. Um, I got the inspiration, and I have to give some credit to Jen and Jeremy. The present that they gave us for Christmas was a mug that said Harbor Church, and it was filled up with goodies. And uh, it reminded me of a ministry we had in Walnut Creek. It's called the Cookie Ministry. And I'm really aware of people who are visiting who may not feel like they belong because I had a long period in my life when I felt like I was an outcast and everybody was in and I wasn't. So the cookie ministry works this way. When people come and visit, we need to get their addresses. We need to give them a friendship basket of welcome. I'm going to get some more of those Harbor Church mugs made. have to ask you how to do it. And I'm hoping to, because we don't have that many visitors, I will start it, but in the future we may need other people to do the cookie ministry? I have a feeling I'm going to be making cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell people that visit that we're not just a regular church, we're not a clique, that we love people and anybody that walks in the door belongs with us. And if they see that Harbor Church mug around their house, they're going to not forget us. So I'm going to continue the cookie ministry as okay. soon as I can. <laughs> Good, thanks. Okay. Anybody back over here? I'm kind of moving around a little bit here. Okay. Stand up. Yeah, sure. Oh, here. Let's stand right, right here. All right. I'm Chris. Um, I um, did the Joe and thing. I took it to students at Central Washington University. And I went, my gosh. Right. <laughs> Don't look at it. <laughs> um, to the uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, um, and um, because I I wanted to emphasize the personal touch and the connection with Jesus and being blessed by God, so I uh, put the money out in ten dollar bills on the table and I told them about the challenge, and, um, and then during the meeting this was about a month ago, then during the meeting as they felt led they could take whatever money they wanted. The results were uh, Charles uh, found two, uh, just came across two gals that he had gone to high school with, and one of them was pregnant out of wedlock and was in desperate need. Uh, he hadn't seen her in years. And so he helped her with some food, and another gal from his high school was also homeless. He never hadn't seen them before in that state. So he felt like that was from the Lord. Um, Randy bought flowers for the custodian who, in the building who um, didn't have anybody for its val Valentine's Day. Uh, Jordan took an unchurched friend to lunch and uh, introduced her to Jesus. Um, makes me cry. Uh, and she also took uh, flowers and uh, balloons to a man in the nursing home uh, who didn't have any visitors for Valentine's Day and uh, told him it was all about Jesus caring for him. 
He couldn't remember uh, two minutes later what she was there for, but that was all right. She was blessed. Um, Ashley uh, took a teammate to lunch and also talked about Jesus, and, and now her teammate is hanging around her all the time. <laughs> and Olivia did the pay forward, pay it forward thing at the at the Starbucks. Um, bought coffee for a person and said the message, or for the next person and said to the barista, the, ne the message is, God loves you. And so she kind of hung around and kind of toward the back to kind of listen. And every single time it got paid forward, they all said, God, to the next person in line, they all said, God loves you. And um, so. It was a blessing that the thing coming from that is not that I gave it so, so other people could work it <laughs> instead of me. So that actually is kind of a kingdom strategy. It is kind of, but I thought I'm only one person, but I know so many students who would love to just bless people because I, I, and all of these students actually were one of, were students of mine. But the thing that really mattered to me as far as the kingdom part was that it was from the Lord. Thanks, Chris. Okay. This is aerobic for me. <laughs> well, then come up here together. It's a, it can be like, you know, where Joe did all the talking, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. Three. We got three. And you're talking for everybody? Okay, introduce them. Hi, this is Anna May, which rhymes with my name. My name's Kate Ann, but I can still not remember her name. This is getting complicated. Thomasine. Thomasine. And, and their story is that um, for with the ministry money, I'm getting nervous. You might have to talk. <laughs> with the ministry money, and what we did was I partnered with uh, one of the other members of the church here, and that was Jana, and we, we got some children together that I cut their hair for them. There was about eight children, and unfortunately, the Saturday I was supposed to have done it, it didn't work out because I had a, a, a doctor's appointment that I forgot about. And so therefore, uh, Kay has the rest of that story and what happened. And they were able to let everyone know it was canceled and rescheduled, except for one family. And Neil and I were here, and we were doing something at the church, and then we were sneaking out downstairs. And another woman came in, which is Thomasine. And Thomasine said, I'm here for the haircutting. And Neil and I go, oh, OK. And so we go upstairs. We don't see anyone who cuts hair except John. And John doesn't have much practice, so. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> And so we ended up just sitting and talking with Thomasine, and she had her beautiful teenage daughter with her. And her What's son, the daughter's name? Annie. Annie. And her son, Satchel. And um, I was talking to her mainly, and Neil was sitting there listening. And Neil goes, well, why don't you take her over and get her haircut, Kate? And so um, we decided to go, because she's a teenager, we decided to try to find a, someone around here who's kind of you know special. And so we took her to Salon Salon over on the corner. And um, she got her daughter got her hair cut, just looked gorgeous and stuff. Yeah. And Neil was going to pay for it. And we went to pay for it, and the woman wouldn't let us pay for it. And so she did the haircut for free. And whenever I'm in a pinch, I've called that salon, and I have never got an opening on a Saturday. <laughs> and I've never got a free haircut either. <laughs> and then I had the chance to meet Thomasine also, though, and sit and talk with her for the hour. And she has a son who's kind of experienced some traumatic stuff and is having a little trouble with his speech right now. And so she's kind of stepping into the testing process. You have experience. And I have experience <laughs> with that. And I thought, boy, you know, she, by having to go to her doctor's appointment, she really touched a family and touched Neil and I. And I thought that was so neat. And then to see her the next Saturday here cutting hair for kids um, from different places here in the area. And then also, now I can talk <laughs> with her. <laughs> and with her money also, um, she's a special ed teacher and a hairstylist um, at a school. She's paying to help get the garden started for some special ed kids. We have horticulture department, which contributed last year as well. And therefore, there'll be an abundance more this year with my special ed kids that are planting 
the different plants that we'll use in the garden outside. A lot of and, layers to this, a lot of layers. And now we have the, the last and final part. This is Thomas's first visit. I've been working every Sunday. Oh, hey, wait, wait, <laughs> holy <laughs> mackerel. You guys better be good with it. <laughs> challenge was a day I could visit with my kids so I get like a little four-hour visit with them and we uh, so I thought well this will be great I'll take the hundred and we'll talk with them and of course like any dad you want to you want to learn them something right <laughs> so so you know I thought hey let's uh, let's use this as an educational opportunity and um, and so I talked with them about it at lunch you know hey what do we want to do with this and uh, we ended up uh, Primarily, primarily at my urging, because uh, uh, I uh, to to go down to the uh, men's shelter, the Union Gospel Mission men's shelter downtown. They have a little drop off there, and that's also where the men are. Um, ever since I became a Christian, I always have a, a I've had a, a strong heart for uh, the homeless and the outcast, and and the youth pastor had to stop me from praying for all the homeless and. Uh, poor people and all that. So, no, nope, you know that's that's probably enough. It's hard because uh, <laughs> uh, I kept you know going on as I might do. Um, the uh, but we we ended up we went to the uh, to the Value Village and we uh, we looked up on the on the Union Gospel uh, website what things that they need and we went to Value Village and we picked up a bunch of the and went to Costco. So we went to Costco and Value Village picked up like socks warm socks and jeans and the sizes that they need. And then we went down just all as a group and uh, walked into the place and delivered them. And the right. kids kids got to see the people there and, and to meet and actually talk with some folks. So it's, you know, I think one of, the, one of the weirdest things is that the homeless people look scary. They just look scary. But, you know, most of them, and some of them are, but, <laughs> but some of us vast, are. Vast majority, and some of us are too, you know. Um, but the, but the vast majority of them are, are uh, very nice folks. And um, so it's good to, to really be able to make that connection uh, as people and, of course, learn my kids something. That's so great. Yeah. Thanks, Baron. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, one more, then we'll have another song. Uh, All right. <laughs> uh, my name is Maxine, and I spent the money all in one place and didn't layer it down. Uh, but I know a couple that uh, are having kind of a hard time. He's had uh, lung cancer and an operation and diabetes and has not been able to work. And uh, she, has, uh, she has been a cabinet maker and they're not building houses these days, and so cabinet making is very low, yeah. And so um, she's working as um, doing, uh, what do you call, uh, not yard work, but tree work, tree pruning. And uh, so consequently, they uh, ha are having a hard time of it. And so I gave it all in one place and for groceries. Okay, we have some more stories to tell, right? Okay. Karen. Yes, Karen. By the way, you lost your dad this week, and it was a nice service Tuesday. You did a great job. All my relatives all wish to pay to come to this church, but since you're going to be Colorado and Louisiana and California. They can't. I know, but I told them they could all come here. Well, if they, were com if they were committed, they'd come, you know. <laughs> so, so what happened What happened with your challenge? Okay, so this is my challenge. Um, I, I work at a community health center setting, community health center in Orange County, actually, and, and I'm a dietitian for, for all the clinics there. 
So I run across a lot of people, I'm sure you guys have heard of but there's a lot of people that just do not have enough money for their medications. And I work mainly with diabetics. So frequently I will come across um, someone that just doesn't have enough money to even purchase their insulin. And they're going to get out of control and it affects their eyesight and all their organs, etc. So I was planning to use mine to help someone buy their medication. Well, I haven't had anyone <laughs> need that yet. I missed two weeks of work, so I'm thinking, you know, that's part of the problem. But um, but I so I still have a hundred dollars in my in my wallet, and I know that uh, that opportunity will arise, and I'm I'm really uh, looking forward to it. I I actually got an okay from administration to do this, which I was kind of shocked that they would let me. And I think Passing out drugs? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but they, and because I explained, you know, that this was a, sure. like a mission which I would be explaining to the patients where it came from, and I'd probably um, say a prayer with them if they would like to do that, and they said that was fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. so, um, so, so it's still continuing? I, it, it is. Okay. It is. So I hopefully soon I'll be able to do that and use it. And I know I will. There's no doubt about it. That's so great. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Mike's not working again, so you guys get to um, verbalize. It's always working, John. Go ahead. It's a miracle. <laughs> so we have, uh, we have, uh, here, why don't you step right out here? So we, we were trying to think of several things, and unfortunately we got the $100 a week after we did the tent city thing, so we couldn't use it towards that. <laughs> God's timing is perfect. <laughs> so um, I wanted to help out with uh, uh, Jacob's Well, I think is the name of it. It's a new center being uh, built in Shoreline for children and uh, single mothers, but um, I know we, we wanted to get involved and active with everybody, and they hadn't moved in yet, so that one was out. And so, um, but at least you're trying. Yeah, and then I had an elevator encounter with a woman named Sabrina, and uh, it was just one of these things in the elevator that the Lord just brings in. And it's a long story, and I don't want to take up everybody's time, but it's a beautiful story. And um, anyway, we hugged, and I told her about God loving her, and she was um, all disabled, and she had a son named Poppy, and told her, you know, about, I'm praying for her, and we prayed in the elevator, and then she walked away, and right away when the elevator closed, doors closed, I thought, oh, this was a missed opportunity, this could have been something, but the doors were closed, and we continued to pray for her, and Poppy, and then, so we have a, um, a senior center near us, and not a center, but a place where our seniors live, and I, I thought, well, let's uh, talk to some people that live there, so I met with the social services the other day, and uh, we're going to uh, bless them with some flowers and things, hopefully for Easter, and then we want to start uh, visit, visiting them and getting to, to know some of them. And we want to really be with people um, that don't, so I asked this person at social services to um, give us a name of somebody that never has visitors. You know, they're alone, they're seniors that are alone, so that's hopefully so I think, you know, we, we certainly probably can bless some of these lonely people, but the other side of it is it'll be a real challenge for me. I'm no John Westfall. <laughs> that's why we're so grateful. <laughs> <laughs> but really, uh, you know, that's, I'm an engineer, and if you want something engineered, if you want wired, if you want a plan, I can... I've, I've always done things in the back. The sit and hold the hands thing doesn't work? <laughs> no. It, if God gives me a strength. Yeah, that's what it is. It's taking out of your comfort yeah. zone. Cool. Hey, isn't that great? Yeah. And by the way, they bought a lot of the food for the tent city when we fed the uh, community that night. They provided the food for it. So I would have given you credit. Well, you Pre-credit, pre you know. <laughs> John? <coughs> yes, yes, yes. Hey. Uh, my name's Dave, and... Uh, 
a group of guys went down to a ministry that the Union Gospel Mission has. Uh, they, we all met at Dick's. We just happened to like, like go to Dick's first. Dick's so, Burgers, right around yeah, the corner. Uh, downtown, <laughs> on, on the bottom of Queen Anne. And um, a guy picked us up from uh, Union Gospel, uh, Jeff, in a van. And from about 7.30 till 10.30, they just kind of take you around and just show you what's going on in the, on the streets of Seattle. And it's quite an eye-opener. And so I've always liked, you know, those uh, fingerless gloves. I always wear those because uh, you can play guitar and, and have gloves on, which is pretty cool. And so um, I went to McClendon Hardware where you can get them really cheap. And I was able to buy uh, 20 pairs of these fingerless wool mittens. And so we just gave them to different people. Right. Hopefully their hands are going to be a little bit warmer. Yeah. They'll be able to play guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should get one so then I can play guitar. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Good. 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 Right. So I also procrastinated some. I um, kept thinking about, um, I worked downtown and I kept thinking about the folks that um, sell the real change um, newspapers and I see a lot of the same ones on the same corners every day um, but I kept you know thinking well I had this idea I'm, I'm supposed to you know somehow multiply this you know I heard Mark Weber's story a couple weeks ago and you know that was pretty cool what happened to him and um, so finally it was Tuesday this week and I just well I can't put this off any longer so Right, Tuesday this week. Okay, good. You know, it's just the right time. Yeah, so I bought a few um, gift cards to um, Jimmy John's, and after, this was after work, and then walked around the block and, and gave them to um, several of the folks selling the cards, and then um, went home, and then got too busy the rest of the week to do any more at work, and then well, it turned out I needed to work in the office yesterday, which hardly ever happens, but my team was going to be in there working, and I want to be there to support them, and I, I mostly buy food to feed them while they're doing all the real work. And <laughs> so I bought them a bunch of breakfast stuff, and then we went out to lunch, and on the way back I ran past a subway, so I picked up some more gift cards. And then I left work about four, and then right on the corner across the street, um, there was someone selling the um, paper. And so I stopped and um, said, you know, would you like, you know, would you like this gift card? Um, you know, God bless you. And he says, oh, God bless you too. I, I know the Lord. And he just, he started talking. And um, he said that it was a pretty bleak morning for him when he got up. He didn't have anything. Um, I wasn't sure what he meant, but it turns out I, what, he, what he meant was he didn't have any money to go buy his newspapers so that he could sell them. Mm -hmm. um, and so somehow he had scrounged up something that he could go and return to a store and you know, get enough money to go buy the papers. And so while he's telling me this, I'm thinking, oh, I have all this food left from you know, breakfast, bananas and yogurt and bagels and cream cheese. And so I asked him, I said, I've got some you know, food, could you use that? And he said, oh, well, yes, but you know, if it's not too much trouble. I said, oh, no big deal, I'll run up and get it. So brought it down to him and I mean, he was so grateful, he said that you know, the refrigerator was getting kind of, groceries were getting kind of low and um, wasn't sure, he wasn't sure what he was gonna do. So, so I, I I, I had to leave. Um, you know, he would have, he'd still be talking to yeah. me if I had stayed there. He was in my time. <laughs> I'm getting there. <that. laughs> yeah, so I leave and I, you know, go around the block and um, give away the rest of the gift cards. Everyone was, one, one man was singing um, Jesus Loves Me. And they were just so sweet and appreciative um, when I gave them. And one, one guy even gave me one of those reusable shopping bags that says real change on it. Um, so then I'm walking back to the garage to my car, where my car was, and who's there 
Jim and his brother. So his brother is homeless. This is the guy who got all the fruit and yogurt. Jim's stuff. the yeah. guy who got all the yeah. fruit and yogurt. And he's got his brother with him now who's homeless. Jim lives in this low income housing nearby. And so got to meet his brother, and um, I told him what I that I was, you know, I'd already told him what the you know, about the kingdom challenge, and I told him, well, I'm going to take the papers that I got, and I'm going to um, put them out at, at church tomorrow, and you know, give people opportunity if anyone would like to buy one, and then I'll bring the money because I heard that he usually is down by the Trader Joe's in Ballard, and so. He gave me a few more papers to add to my pile. And he said, you know, this has just turned out to be such a great day. You know, it had woken, he woken up, it looked pretty bleak, and he said, but you know, God's taking care of me. And she didn't even call to see if, if I'd give permission. You know, isn't that the way it is? When you're doing a kingdom assignment, you don't need permission. Right? Forgiveness. Forgiveness, thank you. Thank you, okay, so. Good. Okay, time is running down, so we got to do this uh, expediently. No, no, give us a question. I know, control. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a friend who's a single mom. She got married about four years ago, and he turned out not to be such a good choice. Mm -hmm. And was incarcerated shortly after she gave birth to twin sons, who are now three. She's going to school full time. Um, Working on getting a divorce, he's making that very difficult because all he has time to do is sit in jail and file a legal paper. Yeah, sure. um, and it's so she's going to school full time. She has these twin three year old boys. She's alone. It's challenging. I was there a few years ago where you're, um, you know, you're making Christmas happen in the dollar store and you're selling things to pay the electric bill. So I did get that. And um, she accidentally incurred an expense on her soon to be ex husband's cell phone account. And his mother has been harassing her about it. And that's the last thing she needs. On top of everything else, she's so brave and strong and working so hard to make a good life out of all this mess. And so I said, you know, give me the account number. I'm going to pay this thing and just get them off your backs. And God made me suffer for this, John. <laughs> Thank you for not saying that I made you suffer for this. I really hate call centers and large corporations. So you got to do a ministry to the call center. It was half an hour on the phone. I cut off at least once and four different people trying to convince them just to let me give them money. <laughs> no, you can't give us money. Your name's not on the account. Okay, let me speak to your supervisor. Okay, I'll speak to your supervisor. You get me the president, I will pay you this bill. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have to go that far, but I was willing. You know? But finally, this very nice girl let me pay the bill. So it was good. See, and it turned into you had to do a lot of work. <laughs> And it was exasperating. That's what ministry's like sometimes, folks. I just want you to know. <laughs> well, you gave us that assignment on the uh, Sunday of Day of Remembrance. And so on that particular Sunday, I was sort of distracted. And so on the way home, I actually ran through a red light. <laughs> so, so he used it to pay the fine. <laughs> no. There was no, people just honked their horns and yelled at me, but there was no police around. I didn't get a ticket. No, I didn't get a ticket or anything. But the point is, I was sitting there thinking, geez, my mom always wanted to uh, have uh, wells in Africa, and they were just thinking of different things. I was thinking of water. But then Cindy and I uh, started thinking about it, and we decided to um, uh, match your, your great donation, and we bought livestock for uh, families in Honduras. Yeah, and we, and so what we did was we uh, bought two flocks of chickens, two flocks of ducks, and a goat. And their mission down there is after they start reproducing that they have to then pay it forward to another family. So that's what we did. The wildlife. Oh, thank you. That's a good story. Okay, Can't, we're going to get over to this oh. side now. We're coming. We're, we're clipping through these here. All right, quickly. Um, Lisa. Um, Lisa, thank you. And um, I was talking to my friend Gwen, who teaches at our wonderful new preschool. And um, she, of course, had her ideas what to do with the money. Because um, she had talked to a friend of hers who has a, a preschool up on Capitol Hill. And we're still trying to fill this preschool. And 
um, her friend said, well, we get a lot of our preschool kids from um, the playground next door, the community playground. Well, you know, we have a community garden. We, and we have some plastic slides. But it'd be kind of fun to have a community, oh, look at me, look at them, look a community, a community playground to for the, the neighborhood and for the preschoolers. And then I got a letter from a friend who was, you know, late on her Christmas card. Yeah, really. And she was <laughs> kind of talking about her son's eagle project. And I went, hmm, hmm. I think we have a scout in this room who might need or maybe two might need an eagle project and might need some funds to help purchase the materials. So I at least have talked to one, Timothy over there, is one eagle. And, and right, he said he's going to do it. So this is, a, no, that's very great. So you're actually, you're recruiting. Yes. <laughs> because, you know, well, yeah. So there, there could be lots of different parts. He already has an idea about what he wants to build. So, all right. I love that there's still works in progress. You know, they're not, they're, they're not all finished. John, okay. can, can I just jump yep. in since you jump can't see quick. me? If I stand up, can everyone see me then? Um, so, Jeremy, I'm Jana, and Jeremy is my husband. We decided to do it together, which was a lot harder than we anticipated it being. <laughs> Because Jeremy wanted to do things for the worship team or for discipleship, and I wanted to do things for outreach or for family ministries, and then we felt like we were just doing each other's jobs. So, <laughs> um, so we landed on um, Homestep Low Income and Transitional Housing, which is where we donated blankets at Christmas, if you remember that. Um, they are constantly asking for diapers. So we thought, okay, well, let's just get $100 worth of diapers. We'll get different sizes, and we drop them off. Um, so that's what we did, and we kind of thought, well, that's a nice thing to do, but we wish that we knew some stories of people who needed them or how they're being used. Um, so lo and behold, yesterday, we got a card in the mail from them. <laughs> um, and it's, it's a, it was a thank you note to us, but also to all of you too. So I just wanted to read it. Um, it says, Dear Jana, Jeremy, and Harbor Church, we at Homestep, on behalf of our families, want to thank you for your generosity and compassion in donating all those warm blankets, underlined three times. Um, and some direly needed diapers. It's amazing that you didn't even know that our diaper stock was completely depleted when you brought those diapers by. So they were out of diapers. <laughs> um, there's such a sigh of relief and a feeling of gratefulness when I bring diapers or blankets by, since for as these families, there's such a necessity and families will often forgo other necessities to pay for diapers. And the blankets were so appreciated by a number of single folks as well as families and we truly appreciate how responsive your whole community is to the needs of those most vulnerable in our neighborhood. So, thanks to all of you, too. Thank you. All right, the diaper delivery. Okay, Susan, you guys have something here? No, you're not touching that microphone. I'm controlling this. Here we go. <laughs> Lots of luck. Okay, first of all, when, when the 100 was offered, I was really excited because I saw all these people that I love that I call my family, my extended family, and how I was positive that any one of those could have $100 and Jesus would turn their lives around. Amen? I don't know. I don't know either. Okay. So we have this $100. And I'm every morning getting up and praying and sure that somehow something the Lord is going to do in their lives is going to alter everything. It's going to be just walk up to this one, walk up to that one, walk up to another one, and each time the Lord is saying, no, that's not what I want for this vessel. So I'd stand there and listen to the story, and I'd end up, instead of handing them money, either a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge. I mean, I'm telling you a kingdom stuff I have tried to sit on the back burner started coming out and happening before my eyes in soup kitchens, on the streets, in the hospitals. We still have the $100 bill, Jesus. But he told me that the building of his kingdom, right, was like you said, about the laying on of hands, the casting out of demons, the setting captivities free, you know, and just to hug them. 
And sometime there's going to be the right situation where you're going to go, hey, this is what it's for, the money wise. Cool. Okay. <laughs> okay. Jane. Jane, yes. Because <laughs> I can't be heard any other way. Um, I have had a, had a history of doing a lot of artwork and stuff, and I create cards. And I was praying about this right after it happened, because after I took it, I thought, what were you thinking? Why did you do that? That's what I was thinking when I gave it to you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was channeling John in my head. And, <laughs> and um, just before I fell asleep, I got this um, message, I think, from from God, not quite that dramatic, but about a, a worship a ministry of encouragement. And I know that in this day of emails and text messages and the rest, getting an, a hands-on card that you can hang on to and pick up and look at again is really important. And so my ministry started sort of, I have equipment for it. This money will be mostly for stamps for mailing, but I'm creating cards and trying to send them to people. I would like to be able to have a way to send them to new people here um, for the church and, and anyone who has a particular need, but also just to encourage people um, and get the message that they are cared about and they're remembered and they're thought of and prayed for. So, Great. Super. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I'm going to give a mini pay it forward on my husband. Um, we got a letter today from a church in Newtown. John had sent uh, three boxes of his books uh, to help the people that lost the, the, all the children that were murdered. And they were so thankful. And it was so neat to know that at least somebody, it helped somebody. And that was a pay it forward on your part. We had more folks talk about their Kingdom Challenge experiences, but our cameras ran out of batteries. We will certainly be bringing you more stories in times to come.